Hello everyone. Uh, so this is one small portion uh, from our syllabus which was left in this week number four. I'm going to complete it in a few minutes. So uh, this has to do with the relations between load shear and the bending moment. Uh, first of all, we'll uh, cover the relationship between load and shear and then we'll cover the relationship between shear and bending moment. So we have a simply supported beam here. It could have easily been a cantilever beam. It doesn't matter. Uh, so we have a beam and over which we have a general kind of distributed loading given by this W. When I say general kind of distributed loading, it means that W here is a function of the uh, of the variable which will be representing the longitudinal axis. Okay, so suppose we have x set along this longitudinal axis, then w is a function of x. All right. Now, what we are going to do in order to establish this relationship between load and shear uh, is to take two cut sections. So usually we take one cut section to draw the shear force and the bending moment diagrams, but in order to find this relationship, we'll take two cut sections uh, anywhere within this beam. So we take two cut sections. And mind you, these two cut sections are very close by. So the distance between them is delta x. Okay, and we isolate this part out and we focus our attention on that. It's like this. The loading will be something like that. Okay. Now, uh, just to complete the free body diagram, uh, we understand that as per our convention, on the right hand side, we'll have the shear force like this. This is V. But since we are considering this kind of uh, two cross sections, what we'll do is we will consider the left hand side here that to be V. this to be V and consequently we'll say that on the right hand side it is a slightly different value given by this V plus delta V. Similarly on the left hand side on by the positivity convention we have this clockwise sense to be the positive M and on the right hand side this is the uh, the anti-clockwise sense is the positive and this uh, moment will be given by this value m plus delta m. So it's a slight difference. There's a slight difference in the value of the m due to this uh, non-zero length over here uh, as we go from as we go across this distance delta x. So this is our free body diagram. Uh, what we'll do first of all is to do a force balance, a force balance in the vertical direction. So sigma f y equal to zero that is going to give us so this is v here and then we have minus v plus delta v on the right hand side and this contributes uh, minus w delta x because remember that this distance this horizontal distance is delta x okay and this is supposed to be equal to zero so from here we can immediately see that delta v is going to be equal to minus w delta x and then we have delta v by delta x delta v by delta x is equal to minus w and in the limit that delta x tends to zero this equation is basically just going to convert into uh, dv dx is equal to minus w that's all there is to it okay so this relationship that you have uh, between the shear force and the externally applied load uh, that is the relation we are looking between the load and the shear okay now of course it is important to understand uh, very critically that this kind of relationship works only if you have a distribution of the load that we have taken here had it been instead a concentrated force okay so had it been a concentrated force we would not have been able to uh, 
write an equation like this okay it is very very important to understand this in fact uh, uh, on uh, on the last class of uh, week number four uh, I had mentioned while solving the problems uh, and drawing one of the shear force diagram that whenever you have the presence of a concentrated force on a beam whenever you have a concentrated force as you move across that concentrated force from left to right there is a jump okay there is a jump in the shear force in the value of the shear force that jump means that uh, uh, first of all there is a loss of continuity and if, the, if there is a loss of continuity uh, certainly uh, the the dependence of v with respect to x it is not going to be continuous it means that it is also not going to be uh, differentiable so this kind of relationship where you have dv dx that doesn't make any sense for that kind of a jump situation all right so it works only for this w uh, which is why uh, this is this relation is very useful but with some restriction which you have to understand okay so you cannot go about arbitrarily uh, utilizing this even if there is a concentrated force next we are going to consider the moment part uh, so let me just separate it out so sigma m is equal to 0 so again looking at this free body diagram i'll have uh, and let me take this anti clockwise sense to be positive i'm going to have m plus delta m minus m from this and now please note that i am actually taking this moment about an axis which is passing through this right hand side uh, cut face okay i'm taking the moment about an axis which is passing through this right hand side cut face so the contribution that i'm going to have from the shear forces will be only from this one the left hand one the right hand one v plus delta v that is actually going uh, through this axis so it is not going to contribute the moment arm is zero there this sense will be clockwise so it is minus v delta x and finally the contribution from the w uh, you can understand that because this uh, delta x is very very small for all practical purposes this w can be considered to be practically uniform here and so uh, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to write this as uh, plus w delta x that is the total uh, force due to this distribution of force uh, and because we are considered this considering this to be practically uniform uh, we can understand that this will be uh, this can be equivalently represented to this force w delta x acting at a distance of delta x by 2 from the right hand side okay so what i mean to say is that uh, it can be something like this okay where this uh, this is w delta x okay so this is w delta x multiplied by delta x by 2 okay because the distance of this equivalent force uh, from the right hand side is delta x by 2 and this thing is going to be equal to 0 so what we obtain from here is delta m minus v delta x plus w delta x square by 2 is equal to 0 now if we take uh, or, or or i can i can go one step forward here so i can take this delta m delta x uh, p plus uh, w 
delta x by 2 equal to 0 and now if I take this delta x tending to 0 correspondingly the delta m is also going to be 0 so the same kind of logic that we had uh, previously used we are going to uh, obtain dm dx is equal to v because please note that as delta x tends to 0 this entire term it tends to 0 unlike this term where you have a small entity in the numerator and a small entity in the denominator so this translates into a, uh, a differentiation here because delta x is tending to 0 this entire term tends to uh, uh, tends to 0 so we end up with this relationship so v is equal to dm dx that is the relationship that we are looking for uh, that, was, that we were looking for uh, between the shear and the bending moment so one relation is this and another relation is this okay and again you note that uh, So these kinds of things again uh, they work only if you do not have uh, the presence of uh, of a concentrated loading okay so the same kind of argument that we had mentioned earlier uh, it is valid here also okay so uh, sometimes what uh, what is done is uh, uh, instead of these kinds of differentiation relation uh, so let me go to the next page so this dv dx is equal to minus w that is sometimes written alternatively as v is equal to minus w dx integration uh, so between two values of uh, x okay so suppose you want to obtain if, if you want to go from x equal to 0 to a certain value let's say uh, some intermediate value a where a is less than the length of the beam so you can find out the value of a uh, uh, the value of the shear force at the location a provided that you know the value of the uh, shear force at uh, at zero so please understand that we are actually doing uh, this kind of a thing so the value of a and the value of zero uh, the value of shear at zero uh, those kinds of limits have to be taken properly similarly for the other relation dm dx is equal to v from here we obtain m okay so we have this again uh, this relation again and these kinds of relations are sometimes useful uh, provided that we are working under that restriction that everything is nice and smooth uh, you don't have any constant loadings or anything uh, in those kinds of situations uh, between two points where there is no constant loading or anything you can find out the moment at one end provided you know the moment at the other end by doing an integration over the shear force okay so sometimes people say that uh, well you first draw the shear force diagram and then piecewise over those regions where there is no constant loading uh, you can uh, go about finding the the moments uh, without actually uh, uh, without actually doing uh, i mean going through the process of drawing the bending moment diagram okay i mean it, it's a good uh, check for us okay using these relations we can do those kinds of checks but i personally i uh, i prefer to actually draw the bending moment diagram when the need arises okay so maybe you can go back to the earlier problem that uh, we were doing on thursday uh, so maybe this one and you can check for yourself whether the uh, the dvdx equal to m uh, and m is equal to integration of dvdx uh, sorry m is equal to integration of vdx those kinds of relations hold true for this shear force diagram and this uh, this bending moment diagram okay so there uh, that's all there is to it uh, thank you very much uh, with this we uh, we end the official uh, syllabus uh, allocated for this week number 4 thank you very much